Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm reviewing Lego Ideas set number 21333, The Starry Night. It has 2,316 pieces, it's for ages 18 and up, and it retails for $170 in the US. This set released in May of 2022, and honestly, I think that it's one of the most unique Lego sets ever, for sure but I also think that it's one of the best ever period because I just cannot believe what the fan designer and official LEGO designers achieved with this set. Of course, the artist of Starry Night is Van Gogh, who is an incredibly famous painter. If you haven't heard of him, I don't really know how to help you, uh, but we do get a minifigure of him in this set, which was honestly a really pleasant surprise. This is also, I think, one of the most unique minifigures that LEGO has ever produced. First of all, let's get his accessories out of the way. He comes with a paintbrush and a palette, and the palette has been reprinted with the colors that, you know, associate to Starry Night. That is awesome, because I think I have only seen, like, the one print on this piece for, like, whatever, 10 years. I don't think LEGO usually changes the print on this, so I'm really glad that they did that this time. And, of course, the paintbrush also has blue on it instead of, like, red or green. But the minifigure itself has a very distinctive artistic style because it's patterned after Van Gogh's self-portrait. And again, that's just a really clever idea to kind of bring in his aesthetic into his minifigure. Um, it obviously makes it... Whoops, sorry about that. It obviously makes it a little bit fantastical, um, but that's perfectly fine because I wasn't going to throw Van Gogh into like my Lego city or anything. Um, and I just think that the graphic design work on this figure is incredible. I really love, you know, the, the strokes, especially on his arms. Like, getting arm printing is really going above and beyond. The face print looks great, and I really, really, really love the torso and legs. There's no alternate face for him, and of course he is missing both his ears because he's a Lego minifigure, so they never have ears in the first place. The set itself is nothing like the Lego art mosaic sets. These are not a bunch of one-by-one -one tiles. This thing has a ton of depth, it's got bricks, it's got plates, it does have tiles and studs, um, but this is an art piece unlike anything that LEGO's made to date, and it's just really impressive. But before we get into the main build itself, I want to talk about this little thing down here. This floating platform is a place for you to put your Van Gogh minifigure and have him be painting the Starry Night. This is a brand new print. And it's kind of like a minifigure scale version of the painting. Um, I wouldn't really like hang this up in a minifigure's house or anything. Just because it does have like all of those studs. Um, you know, it's, it's not just like a regular picture. Uh, because it's supposed to be on an easel. So, I mean, that makes sense. But yeah, this is just a really nice print. You can just like see how much detail went into that. And it looks exactly like the painting. The easel itself is just a pretty simple little build. And it attaches to this 2x2 two two jumper on this platform. And then you can put Van Gogh there as well. And then he can be kind of like overlooking the scene and painting it because this is how, kind of how he painted it in real life. Like this was the view from his uh, window at I believe like a mental hospital. So that's pretty cool. And of course it just adds another dimension to the set. And as you can see, you can swing it around and it does come with a little leg to kind of stabilize the painting. Uh, but you can remove this as well if you don't want it floating, like if you're gonna hang this on a wall. I'm going to go ahead and leave the platform on just because it does provide a little bit extra stability to this thing, um, because this is a behemoth. This is so much heavier and so much bigger than you're expecting. Trust me. Um, like I saw it at the Lego store before I bought it, and this thing, like when I say it has depth, sorry about that <laughs> disgusting noise, but this thing has depth. Like, look at all of that. Like, all of this. Like, this is a solid, like probably around like 10 studs worth of depth, um, just like from out of the frame. And of course the frame is pretty thick too. So this isn't a flat model, like the art sets, there's a lot more going on here than you might expect. So I'm gonna zoom in so that we can get a little bit of a closer look and we don't need to hear the leg scratching all over everything all the time. So this is the little village that was visible from, um, or actually it wasn't visible from Van Gogh's window. I was reading about it in the instruction manual because they provide a lot of stuff, but apparently he, he couldn't paint at night, first of all, because there was no light, so he basically painted from his memory of, like, the little valley, and he put in this, like, church from his hometown into, like, the little town that he could see, and it's it's all very interesting, so you should definitely, you know, like, at least read about it in the instruction manual if you're at all interested in this kind of stuff. 
Um, but I love the way that the layering was done here. It's just a bunch of like plates and tiles, but you can really just see how built up the layers are if you tilt it forward a little bit. And this, this thing is all built in just a manner of different directions. Like you build this studs up for the most part, and then you flip it 90 degrees and like paste it onto the rest of the picture. Whereas like the section to the left of it is all built, like all that is built studs up. Um, but then like you don't turn it. So it's just... It's a very interesting building experience. It was a lot of fun. Like, I I do think you guys need to watch, like, at least a build video if you're not going to buy this set because it is just amazing. I, I can't sing its praises enough. I really love the colors at play here. I like this, like, kind of medium or, yeah, or it may, this might be light azure. We've got dark green, teal, regular blue, dark blue. This is medium blue, I believe. And I thought we had smatterings of sand blue in there. Um... We do have like a little bit of sand blue, but yeah, it's just like, and of course, like that cool yellow color. And again, like that aqua color that I really like, like everything just blends together very well. And Van Gogh is known for his th thick brush strokes. And I think that Lego really achieved that, especially in this corner using these um, kind of like just quarter circle tiles. I think that that was achieved very well. And again, the layering of all the plates, like that's the only way to build something like this with Lego, but Again, it just provides a lot of depth and it really makes you feel like you're in this painting because of like how thick and chunky everything is, which works for Lego and of course works for Van Gogh. The houses down here are pretty simple little builds. Like these are just a couple of plates with those triangle pieces stacked on top. The church, again, love that blue color. That looks great. Um, this one's like set at a little angle. And then these are actually just a bunch of plates and then a tile that are like clipped onto bars here. Um, you actually don't do that till the end, which was kind of weird. Like, you don't finish this with, like, the rest of the village. You, like, to add it on at the very end after you build everything else. Um, but again, I quite like the way that looks. I like the way that they built up the vegetation with, like, the different greens, with the olive green and then, like, the dark brown. Um, and speaking of olive green and dark brown, we can start moving over to the left side of the painting now, where, of course, we have the big cypress tree that is, like kind of like a defining feature of the painting. At least I think this is a cypress tree. I hope it is, because um, I don't know what else it could be. And I mean, of course, before we get into the actual tree, like there is stuff behind it because this is a, a Lego set and because it's so 3D, you do have to have stuff behind it. There's obviously not anything behind it in the actual painting, um, but I like that the designer kind of took some creative liberty, like nothing back there is really exciting, but you know, again, it's it's the depth that makes this special. I like the way this tree was built a lot. As you can see, it's a lot of plates and it's a lot of slopes. You know, we have a lot of those like sloping tiles and then like the more proper like slope bricks. And then we have combinations of dark brown, dark green, reddish brown, and it all, you know, looks pretty appropriate. And I especially like the way that all of these different sub assemblies kind of like combine together at the top because it's very flowy, you know, like you almost feel like it's flowing like water just because of how wavy everything is. Um, and so I think that, like, there was obviously very good parts usage used here. The black stands out a little bit, but again, it's just, like, the way that the shapes flow into each other that makes everything feel cohesive. And so I really like the way that the tree was built. And again, like, this is one of the last things that you build because you do the rest of the painting first. And I was not really looking forward to building it because I was like, oh, I feel like that's going to be really boring compared to the rest of the painting. Or I thought it would, like, be really complex and take a long time. It didn't. Um... And, and again, like, that's something that the building experience of this was very enjoyable, which I almost didn't expect from such an adult collector's, like, extreme item like this. Then as for the main part of the painting, the Starry Night itself, I'm obsessed with the way that Lego did this, like, swirl. Um, I don't know what that swirl is supposed to be like on the actual painting. I don't know if it's just, like, artistic interpretations of, like, the wind, or I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, the Milky Way or something. Uh, but I really like the way it came together in Lego. My least favorite parts of it are just like the couple of studs that are showing because the rest of it is sm so smooth. I think it's odd to see those couple random studs, but there also wasn't really a way to cover them up. And again, that's definitely a nitpick. But all of the colors, like, again, go really well together. It's obviously a little bit blocky because it's Lego. And so the further away you get from it, I think the better it's going to look, because once you get super up close and you start, like, really dissecting it, like, yeah, some of the colors can look a little bit funny. But I think that, for the most part, it really, really works. And again, like, I just really like the way that all of these different, like, slope pieces were used. 
Um, and this is, you know, like built like studs up, but then like attached sideways in. Um, and again, like you guys, you need to look at the instructions. I can't, I can't stress that, stress that enough. And then you just got more like kind of chunky, like plate and slope sections that go in at angles over here that look really good. Um, it's a little bit of a steep angle compared to the actual painting, but again, not really a better way to do it in Lego. And I really like the way that the light aqua and the yellow colors come up in here because they do look surprisingly close to the colors that Van Gogh actually used. Um, which, you know, works out really well, because it's not like LEGO was going to develop a new color for this set. Then we have the moon in the corner, and yes, like, all of the space around the moon is kind of, again, chunky. It doesn't, like, go in as smoothly to each other as you would want. I do think the more I look at it, like, the more kind of awkward that gets, but the moon print itself, like, this is a print on a satellite dish piece. That's fantastic. Um, because again, like it, it just it brings in like Van Gogh's like style and everything, but kind of Lego fies it a little bit. So so yeah, but I don't know. Now that I'm reviewing this, now that I'm looking really up close and I'm looking at like the instruction manual next to me, which has a picture of the painting, um, this like these corners do bother me a little bit because I, I kind of feel like Lego could have gotten it like to be a perfect circle because I know that they can do pretty perfect circles even like on something this flat. As for the rest of the stars, we do have a bunch of printed dishes. So you have like these blue printed dishes, then you have these like white and like aqua ones. And then you have like, I think all of like these transparent ones are the same. Again, those look pretty decent. I think the studs look worse than the tiles. And then I don't like these. I think that like the unprinted ones just look much plainer and like a lot more boring compared to the printed ones. But like I said, the printed ones are great, and I'm glad that, again, like I made new pieces for this, because you can't build something like that that small out of bricks, like at this scale. It would not look good at all. Like, again, this is a little bit chunky, but the swirl looks really good. You cannot build anything that would look good um, at, like, that size. You don't see a lot of colors peeking through that are awkward, but I think the things that bother me the most are this one white piece here when there's no other white in the swirl. Um, and then there's one dark gray bit right there, and I wish that had been covered up or just put into a different color. And the background, like the sky itself, it's just built up with a bunch of plates. Like bag five of this set, there's like four different bags with a bunch of different like one by four, one by two plates, and you just like build. It's like, it's like you're building a brick wall, like you just go in like different lines and it just gets like higher and higher. And it's a really interesting building experience. You do have to be careful not to mess up the pattern because there's obviously a lot of different colors going into there. Um, but I do want to spin this around and show it to you guys from the back because it's kind of easier to see that. But before we do, I want to talk about the frame. You do get a proper, like, heavy built-up frame in this set, unlike the LEGO art sets where it's just kind of like a couple of pieces. Um, and I mean, like, there's not... Sorry about the scratching sound again. There's not, like, a ton of intricate parts going into this, but I really like the way that they've been finished off, like, with these cylinder pieces, like these newer ones. Um... I think that like using these pieces on the frame to round it off really gives it like a clean, elegant look. And the same goes for the slopes, mm -hmm. like having everything kind of slope into the painting. I think it just gives it just like adds to the adds to the overall presentation. So turning it around to the back, you can see that you build the frame separately and then you kind of just plug the painting into the frame like it just attaches kind of like along like these lines. Um, and of course, this is technically, you know, a Lego like display set, it's a piece of art. So you can hang it on a wall and they have built up like kind of a reinforcement around there because this is one of the heaviest things that Legos like tells you that you can hang on a wall. Cause I think only the 1989 Batwing would be heavier. So that's awesome. I'm really glad you can still wall hang it. And here, like I said, you can really see all of the different like plate building. Um, there was like, there's one weird thing about the plates that I'll mention in the extra parts section. Um, but yeah, you, you just need to be careful that you're doing it right, but it's a lot of fun. And the finished effect is really impressive. Here are the extra pieces. Obviously, a lot of pretty colors in there and another paintbrush, which is nice. Just a regular orange brick separator. Um, but this is what I was talking about. There's all these extra plates, and I don't know why. Like, they are extras in the instructions. It shows a little pile of these off to the side after you finish building, like, the sky wall. Um, but I don't know what the purpose of them is, because I know I built it correctly. Like, I double-checked, I triple-checked, and then again, there's there's the pile of pieces in the manual. 
Um, but I don't get why they would give you so many extras. The only thing I can think of is they want to give you extras because they know that it's very hard to build up that sky wall. And so maybe they're like, oh, if you do it wrong, then at least you have, you know, like two of each color as an extra. Like that's the only ex explanation I can think of. The box for this set is, you know, just one of those typical large set boxes. This set is technically made in collaboration with the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So that's why the logo is on the box. Um, also, just aesthetically, I think the olive green stripe down here looks terrible. I feel like they should have used a blue, you know, like one of the actual colors from Starry Night instead. Um, again, nitpick, but I just don't think it looks that great. On top, you have a Van Gogh and the moon. Nice little picture on the side. And then at the back, it shows it hanging on a wall. And they also emphasize the depth, which I think is a really important thing. You do get one of those pamphlets in this set about how you're going to start to see paper bags in new sets. Um, I still haven't seen them, so I don't know why they're including them. I really love the instruction manual art because obviously it shows the actual painting. And I think LEGO did a great job translating this into a $170 art display piece. There's some history of Van Gogh in here. Or Van Gogh, sorry. Sometimes I say it wrong. Um, this is the self-portrait that they base like the style off of, I believe. And then there's some information about the painting itself, obviously in a couple different languages. There's the fan designed one. And again, the fan designer deserves a ton of the credit here because they're the person that like came up with this whole idea, this whole concept. And the fan one looks really cool, but the actual finished product looks, I think, even better, which is, you know, what Lego ideas should be. Um, and I like seeing, you know, like all of that information and everything. And then at the back, you know, you just have the standard, um, kind of thing about how lego ideas works and i really hope that we see you know like sets this cool in the future of lego ideas and you've got a nice little quote on the back so i feel like you guys have gotten a pretty good idea of what i think about this set throughout this review i love it this is just an absolutely incredible feat of lego engineering um not that there's any super complicated techniques in here but it's just it's just so impressive i i'm so I'm so happy that the fan designer like came up with something this good and I'm so glad that it got turned into an actual Lego set. Like I said, I think that this might be one of my favorite Lego sets like ever made just because it's so unique, it's so fresh, and this is the kind of stuff that I love seeing from Lego Ideas. So yeah, I would highly recommend buying this. I think $170, it's a little bit like high. When it was first revealed, I thought that the set was overpriced, but you really have to build it. Um, to like feel its value I think this is definitely one of those sets where the building experience enhances the value so I don't think 170 is bad obviously I'd like to see it at 150 and yes it's got a great price per part ratio but don't forget about like all of the tiny little tiles and studs um, so yeah I, I don't think 170 is bad I'd still recommend buying it at 170 I just think that it would be like an absolute slam dunk no-brainer if it was like 150 so that's it for today. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and check out my website, goldenninja3000.com, and I'll see you guys with more videos soon. Bye for now.